This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Mississippi Edition is your source to stay up to date on what's happening across the state. I'm Desiree Frazier. Tune in weekday mornings at 8.30 as we bring you in-depth interviews on some of the state's most pressing issues. From the Mississippi State Capitol to communities across the state, we keep you informed. Health care, education, and economic development are just some of the issues we tackle. Listen to Mississippi Edition Monday through Friday at 8.30 only on MPB Think Radio. Welcome to In Legal Terms from MPB Think Radio, the show all about you and your rights. We're swapping up hosts for today. I'm Marissa Vaughn from MPB, and my co-host is Adam Kilgore, General Counsel for the Mississippi Bar. Welcome back, Adam. We at MPB are glad you're able to join us today to help host In Legal Terms. Thank you, Marissa. It is always good to be with you uh, uh, and with this crew. Uh, uh, We got the backup quarterbacks today. I always joke that uh, when uh, I fill in for Professor Gershon, which is always a, a, a thrill, uh, that I'm the backup quarterback, and now you are too. I, as I understand, Liz was chasing an eclipse yesterday. Oh, that's what I hear. Well, I, I hope she found it. A lot of people did, and uh-huh. uh, I look forward to hearing from her when she gets back. But we're uh, very glad to be with you today. And uh, speaking of being glad, we're also glad to have with us uh, the Public Service Commissioner for the Northern District of Mississippi, Chris Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown was elected uh, this past November to the post. He previously represented Itawamba, Lee, and Monroe counties in the state legislature. Um, uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Brown. Are you with us? Yes, sir. How are you doing? Good. It's good to meet you. Uh, we, we're really glad for you to uh, join us today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background and why you wanted to serve on the Public Service Commission? Sure. Um, good, to, good to have you. Uh, good to be here, Marissa and Adam. And um, in North Mississippi, we had uh, overcast and rain, so we didn't get to see the uh, eclipse, unfortunately, up here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, hopefully hopefully, Liz found it. Um, yeah, uh, I decided to run for public service commissioner because um, I have a, a family, obviously. I've, I've been an eighth-generation North Mississippian, lived up here my whole life, and just wanted to make sure that the rate payers are, are, are heard and that issues that kind of continue to fester are, are are being addressed and and people are are have that security of low rates and and reliable power water and sewer a um, little bit of my past I've, i was a business guy for years i was in the rv industry so i had um, numerous businesses in north northeast mississippi um, i sold those out two years december uh, december so it gave me more time to focus on on serving the state of mississippi I am a um, father of five and three grandkids, so there's never a dull moment in Nettleton, Mississippi, for me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a good, uh, a good learning curve for us. You know, there's three new members of the Public Service Commission. Um, first time that's happened in a while. So, my colleagues in the Central District is uh, Commissioner Stamps, and then in the Southern District, Commissioner Carr. So, uh, we got off to a, a good start and working well together, and um, look forward to serving the state of Mississippi with those two guys. I mean, uh, we've got a great team at the Public Service Commission in Mississippi now. Uh, that, that's good. And, and tell us, uh, the Public Service Commission is a term I think uh, all of us have heard, um, but I, I suspect many listeners, including the one that's talking to you now, doesn't really fully appreciate what it is the Public uh, Service Commission uh, oversees. So tell us, what do you regulate? And uh, uh, also, as a follow-up question, do you do you coordinate with federal agencies in your work as well? But first, what is it that the uh, Public Ser- Service Commission does? Yeah, um, thanks, Adam. We we regulate ele- electric, gas, water, and wastewater. Um, we do have regulation over public utilities, um, and that takes various forms depending on the entity type. Um, the simplest way to put it is if a customer doesn't have any say-so in the operations and decision-making um, of that utility, the Public Service Commission has full jurisdiction over it. Um, if they do have some input, like aldermen or a co-op board or things like that, then we have limited oversight. Um, with the full oversight, the uh, we full jurisdiction over those of the utilities that don't have any um, constituent or ratepayer input, we have to sign off on. Uh, we approve their budgets. Um, we have to sign off on all their capital expenditures. The, and not, these are, these utilities are like Entergy, Mississippi Power Company for electricity, Atmos and Centerpoint for gas, 
and Great River, which is um, a new uh, company that's kind of moved in the Mississippi the last three or four years that provides water and wastewater. Uh, and, and I feel like I've written checks to almost every entity you just listed. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, so it, it you've you've used the term rate payer, uh, if I heard you correctly twice. Uh, that sounds like that might be a key term of art for our listeners to understand. Tell me what that is. Those are uh, people that pay the bills. Oh, um, so fair any, enough. Anybody that accepts a bill, that's the rate payer. So the Public Service Commission, somewhat, we're, we're set up as uh, that firewall between those monopolies. And, and the rate payers. So if you have a monopoly like those electric companies, gas, water, wastewater, you can only get that service from one person. So there's really no market, um, there's really no market to kind of control their pricing and what they do. So the Public Service Commission was set up to try to be that firewall for, for the people of Mississippi and that rate payer. Payer. Sure See, that, that's what was throwing me off. Payer, P-A-Y-E-R. Yeah. That's correct. There we go. Okay. I was trying to figure out who who was paired off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, rate payers. So those that pay, you know, and we all pay those bills. And so that's our job as as the Public Service Commission is to be that that advocate for for the people that are, are, are paying the electricity, water, gas, and wastewater. That second bucket that you're talking about that they have, um, if you have input, like your rural water associations and uh, some of your co-ops, if you have direct input on who represents you on those boards, then we have very limited regulatory authority over those. Um, so those, it, it, it is a, it's very complicated as far as who we have authority over and who we don't, uh, who we have regulatory power over. Um, so it, there is two buckets, I guess you'd I guess you could say there. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Commissioner Brown. Um, We're going to take a call really fast. Um, We've got Roger from Florence on the line. Roger, uh, what can we what can we help you with today? Hey, Roger. Well, what a delightful panel you have there. And I hope I see you at the convention. I haven't been there in many years. And I'll say at the outset that uh, you may or may not agree. We used to do this in Mississippi until Katrina or thereabouts, and so now we go to Florida. We've been back one time to Mississippi for this huge convention, which drops a lot of money where it is, and we're going to Destin, Florida. I complain about that. Yes, sir, you do, Roger. It's always good to hear from you, even when you're complaining. (laughs) <laughs> no, okay. it, and yeah, I appreciate is- I appreciate the concern there. We we are trying to mix it up here at the at the Mississippi Bar, um, but uh, yeah, we did go to the coast this past year. We are scheduled for Destin, but uh, we'll be back in Mississippi too. Okay, I'll see you then. Now, here's my purpose of my call. It's another another complaint from the uh, I, I use my octogenarian privilege for these complaints, although I, I never was a young lawyer, but I was a new lawyer, and now it's fifty years. I think that Mississippi Bar should be embarrassed at not charging bar dues for lawyers who are practicing, presumably making a good living, and they don't have to pay any bar dues. Now, that's a, that's wrong, and the public, if they knew that, would say, what do you mean you don't have to be? You're a member of the bar. Why don't you support the bar? The other thing is, I learned this when I reached uh, 75, I guess you know the rules, I don't have to have any continuing legal education. So I don't have to stay up to date on legal matters because I'm exempt. Now, listen, if you're practicing law, you ought to be teaching or taking continuing legal education. That rule ought to be changed, Adam. Okay, that's those are my two complaints. And I'll listen to you, but I put you on the spot. Uh, I'm Always really, glad to hear I'm from you, really Roger. Uh, so what what uh, what Roger's referring to is lawyers do not have to take continuing legal education after the age of seventy, um, and you don't. If if I heard you correctly, sir. Uh, also, lawyers uh, do not um, uh, have to pay dues after age seventy five uh, by statute. Uh, and so I, I think that uh, I think that that is the basis for for some of your uh, your opinion there, Roger. And and uh, I, I appreciate you sharing it. Um, uh, I am still encouraged by the practice of law, and I know you're proud to be a lawyer, too, and we're glad to have you one, have you as one. 
This is In Legal Terms. Uh, we are swapping up hosts for today. I'm Marissa Vaughn from MPB, and my co-host is Adam Kilgore, General Counsel for the Mississippi Bar. Your rights are being determined right now by the Mississippi Legislature. To find out what's going on, the MPB News Program at Issue airs Fridays at 6.30 p.m. on MPB Think Radio. You can find video and audio of that show on the Mississippi Public Broadcasting YouTube channel. Host Michael Guidry uh, will be joined by Republican Austin Barber and Democrat Brandon Jones for weekly recaps and roundtable discussions about current events and current issues. Uh, Will Stribling is at the Capitol uh, as MPB News' legislative reporter. I'll have a link to Mississippi Public Broadcasting's YouTube broadcasting's youtube channel on this show's information page along with the mississippi public service commission's youtube channel we're talking about the public service commission with one of its commissioners chris brown but before we get back to chris we have a lot of calls on the line so uh let's go ahead and take our first one david from horn lake you're on the line thank you thank you my call um if I remember correctly, the state of Mississippi tried to sue uh, Tennessee over the uh, the, uh, the water aquifer. They claimed that their pumps was sucking water north of the Mississippi-Tennessee border, and uh, they lost that lawsuit. So I don't think it was tit for tat or retaliation or whatnot, but uh, where I live, we used to have open sewer pit lagoons. We did away with them and uh, raised our water bill 5% for five years and it's compounded anyway i've got some of the highest water and sewer rates in all of north mississippi uh they opened up a new sewer plant it's already out of capacity and parts of north Dakota county pumps their sewage north to memphis and they treat it they had a lawsuit and for what i understand they lost the lawsuit so we're going to have to uh build our own sewage treatment plants to handle all our all of our sewage instead of pumping it north to, uh, from Memphis and Shelby County to treat it. My question to you is, with all the rapid growth that, that I'm seeing in DeSoto County, how are we going to keep up, because them sewage treatment plants are not cheap, how are we going to pay for all this un- unbridled growth? And uh, that's my question. And an update on that sewage lawsuit with uh, Memphis and Shelby County. Right, Commissioner, to the extent you can speak to these things, you know, water and sewer obviously is uh, vital services for any community. Um, yep. t- tell us how uh, the Public Service Commission handles that and to the extent possible uh, any update that you can give us on, on some uh, current things going on that uh, the caller just kindly mentioned. I'm, I, of course, being four months on the job, we're not caught up to speed 100 percent, but I, I, I'm a little bit aware of what's going on there up there that a lot of that sewer water treatment was handled by the city of Memphis, and I know that there was, um, it's a municipal issue, so it, that's a, uh, we don't have a lot of oversight over municipalities. But to answer the, the gentleman's question, there is a, a tremendous growth in DeSoto County, and it is going to take tremendous uh, infrastructure investment by those local municipalities to try to handle that growth. And I think that's the growing pains that they're experiencing up there, um, is that it has exploded. I grew up in DeSoto County and um, left there. I think I left there in the sixth grade, which kind of dates me a little bit. But um, State Line Road and, and Roscoe Road, all that was just two lane and wasn't a whole lot there. Now it's just exploded. So they're having a hard time keeping up with that extra infrastructure. And um, I, I know it's going to be tough, but the city of South Haven and Horn Lake and Hernando just have to have to step up and get the job done and a lot of it any input that we have on rates obviously we'll we'll consider those things as they come before us in in, in our docket meetings but we we do try to keep those rates as low as possible where we have purview over it and we do make sure that they're providing the service that they're supposed to provide and that that segues nicely to a question i had uh and you can pick any uh arena you you prefer but utility rates uh, mm-hmm. How are they determined? I'm sure we could talk for hours on that, but is there a simple explanation for uh, our listeners to appreciate how utility rates are, are created? Great question. Um, and, and yeah, we could talk a long time about that, but rates are based on utilities' cost of service. So our staff, um, the, the rate regulated utilities in the state, they make a, they make annual filings with the commission that 
tries to project out the cost that they expect to incur over the next 12-month period. Um, the commission and staff then re we, we in turn review those inputs to ensure they're legitimate to the public interest. So we try to interject free market uh, into a, a, a monopoly system. From there, the commission sets the rate to allow the utilities to uh, allow. Then we allow the, op the utility an opportunity to collect that amount. Plainly stated, um, utilities are private companies, and the PSC we regulate. We're tasked with regulating to ensure the behavior of the utility is as close to a private company and competing in a market as possible. Um, we also try to monitor and regulate the behavior to produce market sensitive prices for captive customers. We balance the interests of the utility and the customer themselves or the rate payer. Um, the standard we, we're held to is to ensure that rates are just and reasonable um, and that's based on the, the cost of what it takes to provide those services. Uh, the cost incurred by utilities must be prudently incurred and used and uh, useful towards the continued provision of that util utility service. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that. We've got another caller on the line. Uh, let's go to Suzanne in Mendenhall. Suzanne, you're on the line. Hi. Good morning. I have a question morning, for the Public, <laughs> Public Service Commission. Good morning, madam. Um, does the Public Service Commission regulate the co-op utilities like Mississippi Power, et cetera, the same way they do energy or do they have a, a different set of rules or a different oversight? And I'll hang um, up but... Thank you for the question. Um, the co-ops, as long as you have uh, a vote, if you can uh, vote and approve a board to represent you, then they pretty much, we do very little oversight or regulation of that co-op. Because again, as a ratepayer, you have direct. Um, uh, you can choose who your representative is on those respective boards. So we do uh, regulate or oversee Entergy or Mississippi Power that sells power to those co-ops. But the co-ops themselves, we we have very little regulatory oversight. Again, predicated or based on the fact that they have a local board that that their ratepayers or, or members of that co-op can choose. Commissioner, I'm going to follow up with a different question, and, and Suzanne, thank you for your phone call. Uh, what To what degree does the Public Service Commission uh, get involved in, in cell phone service and any regulation with that? Um, very little. We don't have a lot of oversight. I think we had a little bit of oversight over AT&T back in uh, before 2012, and the legislature changed, changed the rules there, so we, we have very, very little oversight over cell phones. Um, and what about uh, unwanted calls uh, uh, that, that we all enjoy receiving on our phone from time to time? Yeah. Does, does your entity have any uh, any involvement in that and trying to regulate or limit it? Do you, uh, do you need an extended, extended uh, warranty on your car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently someone thinks so. <laughs> A lot of people think so. Um, the legislature actually, um, as of last year, the, the Public Service Commissioner will we no longer oversee telemarketers or robocalls. Um, the legislature actually moved that to the AG's office. They're, they're doing a great job over there for what they have. Um, it makes more sense to be over there. Uh, when Mississippi Telephone Solic Solicitation Act passed and, or started, we as the Public Service Commission regulated telephone service. Um, there was a nexus between the PSC and the no-call division, so we kind of uh, were over that until last year. Um, once it was de the, the phone service was deregulated, the PSC was the PSC in Mississippi was an outlier around the country, um, where most states had put that under the AG's offices in their respective states. Um, they have a bigger stick, so to speak. You know, they, when you get a letter from the Attorney General, it's a little more threatening than if you get it from the Public Service sure. Commission. So, um, but they do a great job. I would refer folks just so they have the number. Um, if you have calls that you're dealing with from robocalls or telemarketers, the number at the AG's office is 1-800-281-4418, or you can call 601-359-4230. Okay, Commissioner, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, 
So we've covered rates. We've t- we've talked about some of the the different things that that uh, you have jurisdiction over. Is that in, I think you mentioned natural gas. Y'all regulate that as well. Uh, yes. Uh, the, any the, any uh, any uh, interesting components to these various um, uh, utilities that you, that you regulate? Uh, things that might surprise a listener that they wouldn't think that that would be involved. I, and and get a little background, you know, I think some of us, and I'm guilty of this, it's like the refrigerator works because it has water. I don't know where that water comes from. And I feel like this may be some of the work that y'all do. It's like it's so behind the scenes. We're so used to it. We don't really appreciate uh, the, the care that y'all are giving to make sure that we continue to have it. Yeah, and it's uh, it, it's, it's definitely a service that, especially through the cold winters, that, that comes in handy if you like hot water. Um, we do have a, um, a part of the Public Service Commission that is um, that goes out and it's line, sa- uh, line safety, and they do a fantastic job. We've got a great team there that kind of goes and tries to oversight and inspect any issues that are there. Um, we do con- you know, permit areas for these um, natural gas companies to go into. Um, who they service and kind of their infrastructure costs as well. Um, so they're regulated just like the electric power companies are. And I uh, also noticed in some of the materials, uh, you've got an excellent website with some really good information. I, I encourage our listeners to, to take a look at that. And it does have uh, all three uh, district commissioners listed there. Uh, I understand uh, you, you probably hear from the public. What kind of things can the public contact the Public Service Commission uh, and, for lack of a better phrase, complain about or express concerns? Sure. Yeah. Well, any any com- any questions you have, um, our staff, we, we welcome the call. So we we fill the calls for just about anything. Um, so we, we sometimes if it's Googling the weather, we'll help you do that. Um, so any questions that you have, are, in our name, we're actually called public service. So people take that um, literally, and so do we. So if there's something that we can help you with, call us. If we can't help you, we'll get you to the right people. So uh, we stand by ready to help on any issue. Um, we don't have any regulatory oversight over AT&T, but we constantly get calls that are, are uh, trying to address that, and we, we hit it head on and try to uh, facilitate a solution for the rate payer with AT&T. Um, kind of interesting story. I had one lady call, and she had a, a tree that was leaning over a power line over um I think it was November, or December. So, no, it was in January, and uh, she was afraid the tree was going to fall. Well, the tree was in the count, the county's right away, not the electric com- not the electric company's right away, and so she couldn't get a solution to it. So we picked up the phone and we called the the local supervisor and the state rep in that area, and they both both jumped on it, and we got that tree cut so it didn't fall on that power line. So I tell that story to say we're here to help you do just about anything, and uh, if we can't fix it. We'll get you the right people that that can. Great, Commissioner. Thank you. You're listening to In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. We're swapping up hosts for today. I'm Marissa Vaughn from MPB, and my wonderful co-host is Adam Kilgore, General Counsel for the Mississippi Bar. We hope you'll subscribe to our podcast or find MPB Think Radio recordings at mpbonline.org slash radio. Zap the Gap. Unfortunately, there are areas in the state of Mississippi that still lack good wireless coverage. No internet access, no natural gas. The Public Service Commission of Mississippi would like to hear from you. They have surveys on their website for you to fill out, so I guess you need to get to internet to fill them out. (laughs) Your local library might be a place to access their surveys. I'll have a link on the show's information page about this. Uh, we're talking about the Public Service Commission of Mississippi with our guest, Commissioner Chris Brown. Commissioner, we're uh, thank you again for being with us today. Um, uh, that uh, segues nicely into uh, a, a good question about broadband and accessibility uh, in our state. Can you tell us what the Public Service Commission's mission is for broadband service? Yes, sir. Um, Let me, uh, if I can digress just a minute, in the lead up, you mentioned Zap the Gap. Um, I was at a um, a visiting with a friend of mine down in Jackson, and his mother lives in West Point. And he just said, hey, I have a quick question for you. I was like, okay, what is it? He said, they have natural gas, atmospheres natural gas on the other side of the train tracks, but not on ours. And I said, well, how many people do you have over there? So he kind of gave me the number of how many people. Well, 
in an effort to zap the gap, we contacted Atmos, and they evaluated the situation, so they're going to actually run a, a gas line under the railroad tracks and, and serve those homes natural gas. So um, zap the gap does work, so I would encourage your listeners, if there's an unserved area, reach out to us. We can't guarantee that we can get gas to you, but we can sure try. We were successful in that one in West Point. Um, anyway, thanks for your question too, Adam. Um, the legis- Again, the legislature um, created a group called BEAM. Um, it's the state's the state's policy was clear that BEAM is an agency for broadband. So BEAM actually handles the money that is funneled to it to deploy broadband and discern, de- determines where the broadband is deployed. The Public Public Service Commission, we perform an auditing function for the FCC or the federal government on federal dollars. The state's broadcast broadband policy is best held at BEAM. So the legislature set BEAM up to handle that broad plan, broadband deployment. So it's kind of out of the PSC's hands, um, so to speak, on as far as where it's deployed and how it's deployed. And that uh, uh, BEAM stands for Broadband Expansion and Accessibility of Mississippi. Is that correct? That's correct, Adam. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay, so what, uh, to the extent that you're involved, and I understand there's another entity, um, you know, what, what, where, what do we look like now broadband-wise, and, and what might the future be if you have a sense of that? Yeah, um, what we've seen with the, with the Broadband Expansion uh, Accessibility Act and other investments that the legislature has made over the years, we have a lot of broadband service that we didn't have. Um, I live in rural Monroe County, and uh, Mon- which was Monroe County Power, and Monroe County Power decided to, to take on that task of deploying broadband in our area, in which uh, you know, we benefited from. I've got high-speed Internet at home. I've got children that actually do online college courses um, at home now because we have high-speed Internet, and it is literally the superhighway to the future. Um, people work from home. It's amazing the things that you can do. Um, our uh, tele- Telemedicine is big. So those things to require us to go forward does require high-speed Internet. And so uh, we work hand-in-glove with Beam as much as we can to find those spots that need it and help facilitate those uh, that deployment to those areas. So uh, broadband is, again, that next uh, avenue for economic growth in our state, for sure. Well, we, we appreciate what you and others are doing in that regard. It, it, is, it is vital to our growth, and uh, obviously we've had recent events with the pandemic and such. We, we realized uh, if we didn't notice before, we certainly knew it by then, that, uh, how yes, important sir. it was. Uh, transitioning to another topic that is covered uh, on, uh, on the Public Service Commissioner's website uh, is solar for schools. Uh, and, and, you know, just from a practical standpoint, you think about schools, they really do have huge roofs. Uh, I would think that would be a great place for solar panels. So tell us about so- solar panels for school and what's going on there. Sure. Um, we, you know, anytime that you can produce power um, uh, locally, it makes sense. Um, so schools can use, I know, I know there was a push to use 16th section land to allow schools to lease that land to Solar, uh, photovoltaic or, or solar farms or wind farms to help get a little extra revenue for the schools. So I know that is um, um, moving forward as we as we continue down the path of renewables and, and energies that's reliable and affordable. So it is exciting to see what the future may hold. Um, I know nuclear is quickly, quickly becoming uh, kind of the poster child for uh, net zero and carbon-free power generation. So um, <clears throat> that that gap to get us there may actually be that solar and wind and natural gas to get us to that bridge, be the bridge to get us to that clean energy that's nuclear. Well, thank you, Commissioner. We're going to uh, take a break and go to the phone lines for just a minute. Uh, we have Charlene in Louisville on the line. Thank you for your patience, Charlene. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Charlene. Uh, does your jurisdiction cover C Spire? Uh, it does not. Um, we have very little uh, regulatory. Anytime you have an option, uh, the Public Service Commission normally doesn't have direct regulatory oversight of that company. So the fact that there's uh, C Spire, AT and T, Verizon, and other choices, they, the legis- the statutory does not 
statutes do not allow us to over directly oversee them. But if you have an issue with them, let, contact our office, and we'll definitely do our best to try to help you get a resolution. Who is my public service commissioner in Winston County? Ma'am? Who, who is my public service commissioner for Winston County? You can call us. Be, be glad to help you. No, no, um, I, need, I don't have any number. I'll give you, give you that. It's 1-800-637-1111. Uh, Give us a call. We'd be glad to help you. We have um, folks ready to help you now. And, and Commissioner, I know you just gave the number. I'll repeat it for the audience. 1-800-632-7722. Uh, is that correct? It's 1-800-637-7722. Excuse me. I can't read my own handwriting. 637-7722. <laughs> now, uh, uh, and, uh, and something that we may be able to ease, more easily remember, um, I've been referring to this website. Uh, could you give us the, uh, the website uh, for, for the Public Service Commission, please? And if I had it pulled up, I'd do it for you. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Sorry. Yeah, um, well, that's a good point. I never go. You never go there because you work there. We we will uh, we will provide this before the end of the show and make sure that uh, everyone <laughs> yeah. has access to that as well. It's we're right on I, top of that, weren't we? Adam? Yeah, we we certainly were. We did great. It okay. was graceful, it, and we've 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 moved on. <laughs> um, hey, it's uh, I, I had a I had a I had a it's psc ms Say, say yeah. that again, Commissioner. P we think we lost you for a second. PSC.ms.gov. There we go. And gov is spelled G-O-V, if I recall yeah, correctly. All right, yep. there we go. Good All deal. Right. Thank you for your call, Charlene, um, and we hope you get that uh, taken care of. Well, let's stay on the phone lines for just a second. Uh, we have Roger from Florence on the line. Roger? Hey, Roger. Uh, I'm sorry, hey, Roger. Bobby, you know, it's cool, all callers. This is a different subject. I've spent a career with the telephone company back when we converted from mechanical switches to electronics. Uh, hey, sorry. Roger, can you start over? We're we're losing you. Say again. We're, we're having a hard time hearing you, Roger. Can you start over? Yeah, I had a cool company, and at that time we transferred from using. Uh, mechanical switches. I was in traffic engineering to electronics, and they've evolved a lot since then. And at that time, and I'm told by people with the phone company, even now, that there is still a unique identifying number or digital identification at the time any call from anywhere leaves a line. And that number can be preserved and should be, and this is an opinion now, should be preserved to be able to be used to prevent this business of local calls and calls from every town in Mississippi using numbers that are fake because they, they insert a, a different calling number. That ought to be uh, preventable, and I'd like the Public Service Commission to inquire of the telephone company that they supervise for the rape officers, why can't they do that? That's not an attorney general function. They won't be, well, they might be interested. But that ought to be able to be done according to some experts that I've talked to fairly recently, maybe in the wrong. And I'm just going to hang up and listen because I bothered you enough. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. All right, so, Commissioner, I, I know we had talked about uh, phone calls sure. earlier, and there's was, there was a role now with the attorney general's office. I think... What our caller is, is talking about is the uh, ability for someone to uh, use, I, I think there's a term of art I don't recall, but it's like a ghost number or, or something like that where you're in essence using another existing number to make telemarketing calls. Uh, uh, do you have any insight on that, sir? It is a problem. Um, we definitely acknowledge that. It, we don't, again, back to our previous um, discussion, we don't directly regulate those telephone services anymore. Um, that was that was changed in 2012, um, so we don't have that regulatory authority to, to over, oversee that. Any authority that, that that's there to oversee that kind of activity is at the AG's office or um, 
the, the national do not call list um, or registrations. If you have a complaint, um, go to register at www.donotcall.gov or you can call by registering your number at 1-888-382-1222. Okay, great. And uh, the, at the Attorney General's office, do you recall, is that the uh, Consumer Protection Division or is that another division of the AG's office? I think it, they've got a new division, but their number is 601-359-3680. And again, they're doing a, a, a good job over there at chasing this down. Um, and we'll we'll help them help uh, help right pairs any way we can with any of these issues. Like I said, if we can't handle it directly, we're still going to help you out. All right, so, Commissioner, we've had a couple of different uh, things come up today, and there's there's an active role for the uh, Public Service Commission in some aspects, and it, it sounds like there's a supporting role to a degree in other instances. What about interacting with the federal government? I, I get the sense that. Federal agencies may be involved, and, and I think there's been some federal funding that, that uh, different states have received for different things, such as broadband. To, uh, tell, me, tell me how that works in uh, your experience there. Yeah, um, like I said, back to the broadband, um, the federal government is deploying some, some, um, some funds to try to help develop broadband. We don't have direct oversight on where it's deployed, but we do um, – definitely handle the, the the funds coming down from the federal government so we kind of audit that for the to be in compliance with the federal government or the the, the staff does but it's uh you know it's it, anytime we can de- use funds to get services to the people we're going to do it as quick as we can we're talking with Chris Brown, one of the public service commissioners, about the agency. And we can take your questions on our email address, uh, legalterms at mpbonline.org. Where can you get more info about what currently is going on with the Public Service Commission? I'll tell you that next. This is In Legal Terms on MPB Think Radio. Thank you for being part of In Legal Terms. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show on the MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. It's also available on the MPB Public Media app as are most of our local shows. We're swapping up hosts today. I'm Marissa Vaughn from MPB, and my co-host is Adam Kilgore, General Counsel for the Mississippi Bar. At 11 a.m. Central on Tuesdays, following our over-the-air broadcast, you can hear Southern Remedy Relatively Speaking with Dr. Susan Buttress on MPB Think Radio. If you've been listening to this hour, you've heard lots of great information about how the Public Service Commission takes care of you and your rights. If you'd like to take advantage of some of the assistance we've talked about, just go to their website, www.psc.ms.gov. And we are talking with Public Service Commissioner Chris Brown. Commissioner, thank you again for being with us. We've got one more segment uh, uh, here on the show today. I, one of my favorite que- and we're still accepting calls, of course, but one of my favorite questions to ask is what else? Uh, tell us what else uh, the Public Service Commission does or something that we might be surprised by that y'all have a role in. Um, I appreciate that. We talked a lot, a lot about what we don't do. So um, we, we do have an active role in trying to, um, again, serve the people of Mississippi to make sure they have good quality drinking water, um, safe, reliable, and and inexpensive power as possible. Um, one thing we've done the first four months, we, um, you know, the, the three new guys, we kind of look at it with a different view, and we were able to identify some redundant services that we had in the Public Service Commission, and um, we, the three of us kind of put our heads together and corrected that, saving the ratepayers anywhere from fifty to $70,000 a month. Um, that was one little small change that we did to em, em, eliminate some redundant services that we had and and, um, outside contracts. Um, Also, I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in in the Northern District with Holly Springs Utility District, but um, last year it was kind of brought to our attention that that a lot of people were having some very serious issues there with um, reliable power. Um, So we went in as my house, being a House of Representatives, the Speaker at the time, uh, Speaker Gunn, And um, Speaker Pro Tem White allowed me to go up and do some field hearings to try to discern exactly what's going on and why it's happening. So 
we actually had a, a, a three series of meetings. It's um, again, it's on YouTube, but we actually brought in TVA, which is, provides the power, um, Hall Springs Utility District, and uh, consumer or ratepayer input. And what we found was absolutely amazing. Um, this, the legislature did commission some funds to try to evaluate the system. So they brought in TVPPA, which is a representative of all the TVA Valley, so all those utility districts that are served by TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, um, all are members of this kind of co-op, if you will, that represents them to TVA and, and their interests. So they came in and did an evaluation of the system and basically uh, said that there's vegetation that hasn't been cleared in, you know, two, three, four, five years. And just the estimate alone for the vegetation clearing is over 15 million. Plus, the system just has not been updated in years. So it's it's um, it's an absolute mess up there, and people are suffering because of the the breakdown of the system. The employees are doing a fantastic job, doing all they can. But what we were was represented to us, there's only four linemen for over 13,000 connections, and that spans uh, three portions of three different counties and actually goes into Tennessee. So the governor yesterday, kind of bringing up speed, the governor yesterday signed a bill to allow the Public Service Commission to have a little bit of authority to go in and try to fix that situation, to try to help those people in those areas. Um, one of the One of the constituents up there actually testified that he was out of power for over 96 hours. That's 9-6, nine, six, 96 hours. Mm. Um, and that's a lot of times, not even ice storms, it's just the vegetation and the age of the system has just declined such that it cannot supply the power correctly to the people. Power surges, um, so it messes up their deep freezes. They can't go out of town not knowing if the power is going to go off. Uh, it's it, it's a real eye-opener up there. Um and so we, we got on that last year um, through the through the summer, had a series of, of meetings. Um, the legislature passed a bill again to allow us to to get to work on that, try to figure out some solutions and and help the people of that utility district in Holly Springs to to have reliable power. Um, so that's our next next task. So that's going to be uh, over the summer. We're going to try to go in with kind of I guess if you will hearings um, to find out exactly again what's going on so um holly springs utility district uh, the city itself and the people of that area will have a chance to have an input and then um, we will try to figure out what the path forward is up there so um it's it's very interesting well it is interesting uh, commissioner i did not expect to discuss vegetation with you today you said it yeah, twice no. um and you and you quoted quite a, a high uh um, uh, quote to re be redundant uh, related to clearing that. So, um, yes. short answer is: is uh, are, are the utilities themselves uh, that company uh, responsible for keeping vegetation clear, or is that uh, a combination of, of of others that have have to deal with that? No, well, it's that utility district to make sure that vegetation is cleared off the line. So, as you can if, you can imagine, if the wind blows and the tree limbs fall, then you can be without power. So they they have right of way clearance or maintenance that makes sure that that vegetation is off those power lines. Um, so it's it's definitely incumbent upon the, the utility district. And Holly Springs is unique. There's only three in the state that was uh, kind of grandfathered in in 1956 that allows city municipalities to provide power beyond one mile of their municipal district. So there are over 80% of the business of that utility district is outside the city but they have no direct input on the mayor or the alderman. So it's basically no representation at all. And that's why um, the legislature allowed us to kind of step in and be that advocate for that 80% of the people outside that city limits. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, Commissioner. Well, we uh, are going to have to wrap it up today. It's been a great show, though. Thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry, Glenn from Brandon. We are not going to be able to take your call today. Um, but it, this has been a great show, Adam. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marissa. I think uh, I think the job, backup Marissa. quarterbacks have Thank performed you. well. And our guest, uh, Commissioner Brown, uh, we learned a lot today. Thank you for your time. Uh, I know you have a lot on your plate. I, I, I have to commend you for being on this on the job for four months. And I know you 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 and uh, the other commissioners are new. Uh, the fresh look that you're bringing to this uh, and the service that you provide is very important. So thank you, sir.
And Adam, I will say we've got a great team. Uh, Commissioner Stamps and Commissioner Carr and myself are going to work hard to make Mississippi even better. All right. Well, thank you, Commissioner Brown, for participating in our show. Our team consists of board engineer and podcast producer Abram Nanny. For this broadcast of In Legal Terms, I'm Marissa Vaughn, and my co-host has been Adam Kilgore, General Counsel for the Mississippi Bar. Listen to In Legal Terms next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.